yeah, we're really here to um, see, you know, what's gone well that we can celebrate, what could be improved, what could have been done better, what do we want to take uh, uh, as, as we go forward, uh, working uh, with the um, same partners, but additional partners as well uh, in the livestock sector in Tanzania. So um, in the next uh, 15 minutes or so, what I'm going to do is to just give ourselves an overview of um, where we've been coming from, what we've been doing, highlighting what we see as the um, an overview of results, the achievements, um, but uh, the details will be given by during uh, presentations that will be uh, shared by my colleagues around those four focus areas uh, that um, we talked about, um, integration, inclusion, innovation, and uh, impact. Um, now, what we've been doing uh, really in a nutshell maybe could be summarized as uh, trying to um, testing how to improve agricultural research uh, for development to be more impactful. So working from the research side, but trying to push the frontiers of um, uh, ensuring that uh, research is used um, to achieve the aims of value chain development. Now this slide, uh, in a nutshell, it's difficult to summarize things that have gone on for so, so, so many years, uh, but I've tried to summarize in a nutshell here what the pre previous focus um, was up to around 2017 and what the key lessons were. The key activities that we got involved uh, in, in a summarized form, were you know, testing various multi-stakeholder processes. These are dairy market hubs and innovation platforms uh, to increase the use of inputs and services, including um, innovations that will come, come from CGS centers such as ILRI and SEAT. And I've got um, a, a, a diagram there reflecting um, how we designed uh, the hierarchy of these multi-stakeholder uh, processes. Um, at the top, having the Dairy Development Forum and having um, with, with key um, areas, uh, challenges or um, innovation challenges that it was meant to um, focus on, um, you know, but also nurturing uh, other multi-stakeholder processes uh, while trying to address issues related to how to grow the dairy herd, addressing feed scarcity in particular, um, was seen as a major challenge that needed to uh, be addressed and filling gaps in dairy technology and agribusiness skills, yeah. Um, I'll reflect, uh, shortly on the, you know, to what extent did we succeed or not. The second area was aimed at strengthening market linkages to overcome market barriers, uh, increase participation, particularly of women, um, increase income, revenue, um, and improve livelihoods generally. And I referred earlier to the target, deliberately targeting pre-commercial, um, producers, cattle keepers in areas where dairying uh, currently does not thrive, such as Morogoro um, and Tanga. Um, and uh, you can see the map there reflects the uh, areas that we worked in, the specific districts that we worked in, uh, and uh, the kinds of linkages that we tried uh, to, um, uh, to build uh, between producers, uh, milk traders, um, input and service providers, um, and how the money and payment agreements between them uh, could happen. Now, in terms of the lessons, um, I think I can summarize that uh, the village hubs were found to be useful for the intended uh, purposes and the progress towards uh, sustainability was demonstrated. Um, we ended up by sharing those uh, experiences in what we call site-specific plans that were kind of blueprints for the uh, development of those uh, village groups who handed over these to the uh, regional administration and the district and at the region um, so that they could use those, uh, they work with others to build upon the achievements that were uh, achieved up to that point. Um, um, there's also the uh, Dairy Development Forum that stakeholders thought 
would be useful um, as uh, a complement to the uh, uh, activities under the Tanzania Dairy Board to rally stakeholders, but have a free forum where um, stakeholders could um, uh, interact uh, freely, particularly um, mainly from the private sector. And um, happy to report, and we have uh, the uh, Secretary of the Dairy Development Forum with us here, Charles Tumaini, that this is still going on through, um, you know, exchange of uh, information within um, a very uh, active, vibrant uh, WhatsApp group. Um, so, you know, the successes seem to have been achieved at that point, although at the lower level in the envisaged, um, you know, working groups or uh, having these platforms reflected at the regional and at the uh, 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 village level countrywide uh, only happened in a few places. Um, a key lesson was also that starting with the formation of farmer groups is a slow process to create market hubs. It requires significant investments and time. Um, one analysis, a systems dynamics model that we did shows that in a place like um, uh, Kelosa, you would require at least five years of you know, uh, significant government investment in the specific areas. So you can have, uh, to, that would allow private sector to uh, engage profitably in provision of artificial insemination, for example. Um, and going forward, uh, and this is what we picked up in later years to try to um, learn more about, is that a quicker way would be to start with uh, agripreneurs who integrate service delivery into their agribusinesses. Um, going into the specific results and the achievements from uh, that phase, uh, we were able to show that skills training plays a very important and perhaps immensely underappreciated role in growing uh, livestock agribusinesses. Yeah. We, we did, towards the end of the last phase, engage with input and service providers and market traders and uh, in, you know, working under the leadership of Faida Mali, uh, engage them in uh, uh, intensive uh, courses. It was just a small cohort of uh, about 20 to 25 um, uh, inputs and service providers. And the assessment was that, you know, these, uh, you know, had market impact in terms of uh, increasing the amount of turnover in their businesses, the amount of business transactions that we were engaging in and linkages with, with, with farmers. And uh, we picked this to uh, build on in the current phase to learn more lessons. Um, a policy forum that many here will have attended with partners in 2017 capitalized on all these five years of investments linked to specific um, innovations um, and uh, um, looking at in what in investment opportunities, uh, opportunities for scaling, um, which um, innovations uh, were amenable to investment by public or uh, private sector based on the theory of change that we had then. Um, this was showcased and I've uh, provided a link uh, here to where that information um, is uh, curated. Um, more evidence, if you want to see from the previous phase, please just go to the Masiwa Zaidi page on publications and you'll see the range of outputs that were generated then. Now coming to the second, uh, this phase uh, that we um, tried to uh, work on after 2017, we then coined um, a project that uh, right from the start um, integrates uh, various um, areas, various uh, uh, technologies uh, from across the CGIAR covering uh, uh, breeds, to AI technologies, uh, covering uh, feeds and forages, covering um, uh, uh, animal health, ensuring that the technologies are cleaned into one project. And like the previous phase where we were, you know, basically had a number of projects, but they are all separately funded by various bilateral donors. And there's a bit of a struggle trying to put them all together. So to try to correct that, uh, deliberately um, uh, uh, designed a core project uh, around which we would engage directly, but also have other projects linking uh, into. The aim was to try to see if we could quicken uh, the process um, 
of um, upgrading, um, uh, enhancing sustainability uh, by engaging inclusive dairy agribusinesses as entry points to um, catalyze uh, the use of integrated packages by farmers, uh, guided by a theory of change that we will be uh, looking at and reviewing uh, tomorrow. Um, and um, uh, capitalizing on outputs and outcomes, you know, so that uh, we um, um, in communicate this uh, effectively and recently, some of you may have been part of this recent uh, policy briefing that was presided over by the uh, Deputy Minister for Livestock in Tanzania on uh, policy actions for climate smart dairy development in Tanzania. Now, I won't go into this in detail, but this reflects the theory of change um, that uh, we will be delving into a little bit more tomorrow. Uh, you can see the key focus was still in trying to get uh, investors investing more in the dairy value chain in Tanzania. Uh, if you think about it, the, uh, the pathway through which uh, research can be more impactful is having investors. And when we to investors here, we're not only referring to big, you know, government or uh, foreign donor investors or multilateral donors such as IFAD. We are also referring to value chain actors who will be convinced, who will have been convinced by the kind of information that we've been trying to generate and uh, dip into their pockets and invest um, their monies into uh, uh, the development of the value chain, um, thereby uh, benefiting all actors, benefiting themselves, but for us, uh, importantly, benefiting livestock keepers, and in this case, uh, dairy keepers. The main goal being, of course, increasing the income of uh, the producers, farmers, uh, through increased uh, productivity. Um, the, a number of you were engaged with us in trying to define what would be the priority technologies that would be um, demand-driven uh, and of interest to both the uh, agribusinesses, the agripreneurs, and uh, demanded by the farmers and recommended by experts. And we came um, with the recommendations uh, related to uh, precarious grass, East Coast fever vaccine, um, artificial insemination, uh, manure management, uh, and the main delivery mechanism was identified to be uh, capacitated agripreneurs, identifying, you know, uh, carefully identifying agripreneurs who uh, would be interested, both startups and uh, established businesses and working with them, capacitating them so that they could exploit uh, these technologies that were recommended by experts, but they also saw an opportunity to be able to fruitfully or profitably exploit. This diagram represents uh, the uh, pathway to the role of uh, actors in the delivery of uh, these technology packages. Um, uh, some, to, to, to summarize, uh, basically, you know, you got on the left, the best bet interventions, uh, working with development agents and uh, to uh, enable uh, the um, uptake of uh, the technologies, the agropreneurs and the startups and agri uh, established agribusinesses would then uh, profitably leverage these to deliver to uh, dairy farmers directly, but also uh, producer groups. Um, they thinking here, or the hypothesis uh, basically is that uh, by doing this, the agribusinesses will begin to thrive. They will provide more input and services, um, profit from that. And as a result, the farmer milk production will begin to increase. And as milk production increases, farmers will naturally find the need to form groups because milk as a perishable product needs to be uh, pulled together, cooled, marketed uh, quickly. Um, but when there are small volumes being produced here and there, then farmers do not see the need because there's no economies of scale. And that's the reason why informal milk markets continue to thrive. Um, so this uh, intervention is aimed at upgrading, continue to upgrade the dairy value chain, but using a pathway that we think would likely be faster than the previous approach. Um, the current phase, if I may go to quickly through this uh, slide on what we have been uh, uh, doing, you'll hear more about this uh, in the, uh, tomorrow and the day after in terms of results and achievements. 
um, going through the key strategy areas in the theory of change that I just showed you. Uh, that's increased capacity of agribusiness, packaging and testing of environmentally sustainable technologies and influencing policy and environment. At the capacity development, we've had very fruitful engagement with a number of our partners here, uh, led by uh, Takadeko, uh, Sugeko, uh, Kilimanjaro Dairy, Cooperative Enterprise, and several others um, who have engaged uh, in gender responsive uh, incubation uh, with boot camps conducted uh, and you know, tailored uh, you know, manuals uh, and uh, digital tools uh, to enable uh, the agropreneurs to be more effective in what they're doing. Uh, we've had some work uh, around feeds and forages and uh, farm demo plot to reinforce uh, training and practice, or uh, seem is believing, they say. In terms of the research to package and test environmentally uh, sustainable technologies, um, we are now beginning to engage and we will be monitoring how the agropreneurs are testing these technologies that they have selected. We've done a baseline both at the market, the agropreneur level and the, at the farm level. And uh, we uh, have uh, ensured that the technologies are cleaned. Uh, this is a tool developed by our uh, partner, uh, SIAT, who are with us here, uh, to ensure that uh, environmental footprint uh, is uh, not um, uh, adversely, uh, you know, we, we, do, we don't cause uh, an environmental footprint, but also to do an ex ante, um, you know, assessment. Uh, of the intervention packages. And on the policy uh, and investment front, um, I already mentioned the high level policy briefing and uh, actions for climate smart uh, dairy development um, that uh, uh, had very uh, vibrant input from various actors in the NGO sector, but also um, the government and with a number of commitments on specific policy uh, actions. We also having significant um, parallel engagement that are led by the Ministry of Livestock and Fisheries who've invited us to engage with them on uh, the implementation of the Tanzania Livestock Master Plan, um, beginning with uh, um, investments, looking at investments, both public and private in the um, uh, dairy value chain. Uh, the question is basically following on on the question since the implementation, since the uh, launching of the livestock master plan, what kind of investments have taken place and what can the government begin to do to try to accelerate that? And there's actually a workshop that's going on tomorrow in Dodoma to uh, prioritize uh, those investments. Uh, thirdly, on uh, influencing policy and the investment, there was a very successful forage seed systems um, workshop that was held in uh, Morogoro um, a couple of months ago uh, that identified feed systems uh, bottlenecks um, that are now currently being addressed. There was a significant commitment by all involved to address all the regulatory barriers to accessing um, forage seed barrier, for, for forage seeds for Bricaria, uh, for example, but other, other forage seeds as well. Now, um, as uh, mentioned already, this meeting is for you to help us to consolidate and capitalize on experiences so far, um, pending further uh, communication with those who are not with us here. Thank you.